Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for coming out on such a blustery evening. We've been spared some snow, which is um, a nice thing in November, I suppose. Um, welcome. We are here tonight um, to hear from a valuable member of our community um, who is going to talk a lot about things that I think will connect with many of you, regardless of your background or your major. Um, Fabio de la Cruz was born and raised in Argentina. In 2001, after the worst financial crisis in the history of Argentina, he migrated to the United States. States. His first job in Indianapolis in 2003 was as a busboy with the American chain Don Pablo's Restaurants. Today, De La Cruz heads Soho's Capitals LLC, a capital allocation company that just committed 200 million two zeros and then a lot more, $200 million to change the west side of Indianapolis as we know it, to becoming a destination and a great neighborhood to enjoy and live in. So he's going to talk more tonight about um, window to the world and ways in which we can imagine both our own communities in a more global way, as well as thinking about the global world from a local perspective. So please welcome him, give him a good Marian um, welcome, and we'll look forward to some questions at the end. My name is Fabio de la Cruz. I'm coming from Argentina. Uh, I will, this is not gonna be an exciting lecture like everything else that you have in this place. That's why uh, hopefully I can keep you awake for half an hour. <laughs> My, uh, I, I grew up in Argentina. I, I come from a poor family. Uh, I always, um, I never felt poor because my mom uh, always gave me love and always I felt that there is nothing else that I can have. That's why, uh, but she is still in me the love for uh, knowledge. Uh, she wasn't a, a formally educated person, but she loved books uh, and she tried to pass that on me. Uh, she felt miserable. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I never get be good with books. Uh, every time that I start to read a book, my mind goes someplace else and, and I cannot finish one. I think that I cannot read fast enough. Um, but in, in, I, I have an IT business in Argentina until in 2001, actually in 1999, Brazil has the worst economic crisis uh, they devalued the currency, uh, and in 2001, uh, I lost the little that I have, and I have to come to the United States. I started in Miami as a, as a dishwasher, and did all kind of jobs until I found my second wife. That she was from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, her sister was living here, and I loved the growing of this city, and I thought that it would be a great city to move. Just because I thought that if I grow with the pace of the city, I'm gonna be in good shape. And it was the best decision that I ever took. Like she said, my first uh, job here in, in Indy was in the North Side and Don Pablo's as a bus boy. I did all kind of jobs until I land to a job as a, a loan officer. And that, that job changed my life because I started to see what investors were doing and my, uh, my family thought that uh, they never teach me something like that. That's what I understood that that would be a, something that I like to pursue. I start to to listen a lot of audio books because I can read, but I can listen, and that's why I I start to have as much knowledge that I could uh, to start to pursue my career as an investor without having any money. That's why I start uh, been learning about financials. As a loan officer, after that, I took my classes as an appraisal, and after that, I took my classes as a real estate agent, thinking that the next thing that I'm gonna learn is gonna be to be an inspector, but as a real estate agent, I became the number one agent in Century 21, the second largest uh, real estate franchiser in the city. I started to make some money, I started to invest in residential. Uh, as a residential uh, real estate broker, uh, I, I always want to learn more. That's why I never listen music in the car. I always was doing audio books. Pretty much I have my goal of three audio books a month. Usually my average was like five. That's why if you put that in 10 years, I became a different person <laughs> after that. And, and after that, I start to buy commercial properties. 
uh, until uh, I had enough properties in this neighborhood that I found myself in this strange situation where I control most of the neighborhood and I became like a mayor or something. <laughs> uh, because before I used to go to a strip center um, and I see that it's destroyed and, I, and it was totally vacant and I was thinking, okay, I can find good, I can find good tenants for that strip center. Um, uh, but knowing the shape that it is. That's why usually I bought that strip center. I, I put big lights. Uh, usually I had to get rid of drug dealers, all these kind of people that they were doing stuff there. And, and I start to work with people that want to be tenants, but they don't have the financials to be tenants. That's why for me always was more about the character of the person and the inclination to work hard than whatever financials uh, they have. I remember when I closed my first strip center, um, the sellers were these wealthy people. Um, they, sent me, they gave me this uh, credit report and they said, hey, yesterday, uh, we have this person that applied for this space, but he's bad. He's, I give it to you because we waste the money on this credit report. And I said, but do you talk to them? I said, no, look at that credit report. There's, there's nothing to talk about. And I took the time to talk to him. Uh, this guy uh, moved from California. He grew too much too fast where he got in financial troubles. Still, he has contracts from California, living in Indianapolis. Obviously, that was a great prospect. Uh, and, and he still is in one of our places. That's why, that's the approach that I took. At the beginning is because that came natural to me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a people person. That's why uh, I always uh, believe in people. Sometimes uh, I learn the hard way that some people are not the ones to trust. But I take that as a as my price to know who I'm talking to. I, I don't see it as a bad thing. I keep doing that and it's been great to me. Uh, and I think that's one of the most, the most important things that I did in my life, what I believe that I've been successful, because it's better to have more people trying to cheer from your success than from your failure. <laughs> and that's why even if you have certain people in, in, the, in the journey that, that you may think that won't be worth it of, of, of your time. Uh, always, I've been, the, I, I've been doing that. Now, um, when I'm talking about a strip center, uh, I rent the whole thing after I, I base my, my tenants and in, in, in the character of what they are, and I start to do really well. I wasn't expecting that. The beginning was more like a gamble than anything else. And, and it works really well, and I have full occupancy. I went to the next one, I went to the next one, and, and until, like I said, now when I control most of the neighborhood, um, I always was thinking about buying them all. But uh, I was always making fun of, of, of a friend of mine in the neighborhood that I was telling her that that's, that's the T-Rex of the neighborhood because it's too big, uh, it's gonna eat you alive. And, and, and at the beginning I didn't have a great idea what to do with it. Until I start to think over and I, I come out with this idea, uh, more than anything, seeing what the new generation does, that uh, they don't like that much to live in the suburbia. They, they don't like to have that much that privacy that the last generation likes to have. And that's why they like to be each other. They like to be close. They like to be with their friends. They don't like to own a car. All these things that make that property perfect for something like that. Uh, in real estate, also, always the location is the most important thing. The size may be the second most important thing. Uh, this property have both of it. That's why after that I said, oh, what about if I take this mall and, and test to think that as a mall, I think that as if I'm talking about a neighborhood where 
the concept of the mall is disappearing because if what you expect is to have the anchors to bring the traffic and also to pay the real estate taxes that you have to pay for such a big place and you have the online business that is the first one that they are attacking, obviously that model doesn't work anymore. But if in test to have an anchor, I have a, an apartment complex, or I have a boutique hotel, or I have a corporate office. And it tends to think about a whole, I think, more uh, as a neighborhood, and I can recreate a street. I, I was like, that should work, because at the end, uh, it will be like in a small city. If I like to be together and if I have my my apartment and I go home downstairs, and especially in, in, in Indianapolis that the winter is long and hard, I can do that the whole year round. I thought that was a great idea, and that's when I decided to go um, and, buy, and buy them all. Um, another thing that I thought uh, when I got to that point was, okay, now I control most of the neighborhood, Let's think what are the good or bad things about the neighborhood. And I start to realize that I said, okay, the location is great. You're five minutes from downtown, 10 minutes from the airport. You have a creek, that's good. Uh, you have a private airport. And I start to name it, everything. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm, I was lucky because <laughs> I have a great neighborhood. <laughs> the only thing that I had to do is to put it, put it in better package and be sure that I can rebuild the things that uh, disappear. Now, in this case, because I control most of the neighborhood, I can do it in a way that makes sense. Uh, thinking about that, uh, I thought one of the most important things that this neighborhood had that is, that is really unique is the fact that you have a lot of different countries living in the same neighborhood. If you like to enjoy diversity, Usually you have to go to a big city. Usually it's geographically located in different parts of the city. Uh, but having 130 international restaurants in the same neighborhood is not unheard of in the United States. It's unheard of around the world. I, I travel all the time. You don't see a neighborhood like that. That's why I said, what about if I use that as a base that also goes in line of attracting the new talent and, and everything that we're talking about, the, the the new generation that likes to be close, they like to be diverse, they like to have experiences, etc. That's why I said, let's do this, let's take the halls and test to do just normal streets, let's do international streets. Let's say, let's think that, that I'm doing a, in a street from, I don't know, from Africa. Let's do another hall from Asia, and, and that, that was the initial idea that I have. I put my, my designing team to work on that, and they come out with great renderings that, I don't know if you, if you went uh, online, but if you went online and you check Window to the World, that is the name of the project, you will see uh, some amazing re renderings. But when we start to show those uh, after the press release that we did and we show all the projects that we we're doing, uh, I start to have uh, some congratulatory uh, uh, comments, like, we love what you're gonna do there. This is great. Uh, this remind me to Epcot. This remind me to Las Vegas. And I'm like, uh, uh, this is no, <laughs> I really want. And, and, and they start to, to, to and they start to tell me a little bit that it would be hard for me to recreate a place without and be authentic at the same time. Uh, and that's why I had to rethink um, what I was thinking about the design of what I what I like to do inside of the of the mall. Um, at the same time, I was invited by the president of the Chamber of Commerce to go to the annual meeting that they have. And I was sitting in, in there and it was this moderator that was from Lilies, and, and she was moderating a, a topic there about the business that are coming to Indiana and, and the business impact in Indiana. And, and she said a couple of things that really struck to me. 
Uh, the first thing that she said was, um, <clears throat> It's hard to bring companies to Indiana, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's, it's really hard because people outside of Indiana, they have the misperception that uh, Indiana is a cornfield. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I was like, OK, OK. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to know. Um, the, <laughs> the second thing that she said uh, is, uh, we're tired to lose with Nashville. And I'm really competitive. When I'm saying really competitive, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy competitive. I'm like, we're losing them with somebody? Uh, okay, uh, let me take this on. But, but one thing that started to strike me there is like, I get it. If you don't have a, a thing that you're doing, that you're selling outside of the state that embrace the talent and, and have some kind of attraction that can change the perception of the people of what this state is about, yeah, people are going to take whatever whatever idea that they have or whatever misperception of what they have. That's why after that I said, wow, uh, we can recreate this neighborhood based on the problems that she just told. I said, I can basically do a neighborhood that can be better than any other neighborhood, not only in Indiana, but in the country, maybe in the world, but put it in the frame of something that already worked. And, and, and all the time in, in my life, uh, the way that I, the, 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 yeah, the way that I've been doing to, to be successful is every time that I try to take a challenge, uh, I try to study the best people on it, I try to see, okay, who are the best doing what I like to learn? After I learn that, I can see that the most successful people doing something, they don't do it the same way. But there is a pattern there. That's why usually I take the pattern, and I know that I had to do that. After that, I take the things that I think are really unique about what they're doing, and I do my own thing. Uh, and always I did like that, and it works really well. That's why. In this case, I said, what are the best cities uh, attracting talent and retaining talent? And I thought, OK, LA, uh, Nashville, uh, Austin. That's why I took my team and I said, we're going to travel now. And we went for two weeks uh, to all these cities. We do a lot of research. And that way, we knew exactly what they were doing, how they were doing it, and what they were successful. And what are the things that they weren't doing well? And what are the things that we can do better? And after that, after that trip was really great to me because it, it made me change the way that I was thinking about the new generation. Uh, I have an idea of, of what they will like. But in this case, I learned the frame, framework where I should be in order to be successful. And we, based on that, I recruit a couple of big names of some tenants that I think that they're amazing, and that's why they are, they're successful in those cities that they're going to be in the neighborhood, and you guys going to know next year. Uh, about those, I, that's, that was a good way to not only recruit some tenants that got in that direction, but also <clears throat> to have the local businesses that can be in the framework of what we want to be sure that uh, they are part of our neighborhood. Uh, based on that, <clears throat> now we are uh, having this neighborhood that is not, it's not nothing like Nashville, nothing like, like um, Austin or any of those cities. It's going to be a, a a better neighborhood like that in the way that we use the, the framework that they have to do something new. Because at the same time, I see that they kind of, the, the new things that most people enjoy as to be modern, they're actually old. You know? <laughs> because if you start to think, even the, the, the two really uh, big places here that I enjoy, like, like Butterworks or, or Ironworks, uh, those the design based on Soho's that is 20 years old, and that's why it's great and it looks new in Indiana. 
but if you go to the rest of the, the, the country, you can see the same thing all over. That's why I, I don't want to be the same. I want to be different. That's why if I can use that as a base and put some international twist, some color on it, or some of the things that you don't see there, I can provide something different that at the same time can attract people to live in our neighborhood and, and have the companies to be part of this process because in, it's in the best interest because if that's the problem that they have, we can help them to solve their problem. At the same time, it can be in the best interest of the governments because everything follows. If the countries uh, look for, uh, for, for talent, uh, but, and, and the cities look for, for companies, but the companies, uh, what they want to have is, is talent. And the talents look for a neighborhood. They, they look for a place to live, basically. If, you, if you're really talented, if you're, uh, you can choose whatever, any place to live. And that's why what you have to do is to provide a great place to live. I have the advantage that I can create that without talking to anybody. Uh, and that's why in, in the development of the neighborhood, I always, when people ask me, I try to explain it in, in this way. I always think about three rings. I think the bigger ring is the neighborhood in the totality. If you go from a high school road to Lafayette Road to, let's say, uh, 465 to 30, and, and that's the big neighborhood. And, and we control most of the, 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 the strip centers in that neighborhood. That's why the biggest challenge with that neighborhood was, OK, how do I do security? And that's why I, I decide to give to the city of Indianapolis a police station because they have a, a, a building that it was, it was in a good shape. Their <clears throat> lease was expiring. And that's what I decide to provide that. Now, this can, this can be seen as I'm, I'm being nice, but uh, what I'm doing here is to create something that also is going to benefit me financially. Because at, at the end, I'm a business person. I, I have a different way to do business, but at the end, I'm a business person. I, I'm thinking always in the long run. Uh, I, I'm not a speculator. I, I think always that I, when I get a property, I will leave from the cash flow of that property. And next, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to keep doing that. Now, why I can... Uh, I, I can build a police station for the city because if I have more security next time that my my tenants has to renew, they're in a better neighborhood, now they can pay more, and now I get the benefits financially. That's why at, at the end, I, I do good things, but financially has to make sense. Uh, and, and I notice that a lot now that I'm doing a lot of those things, thinking about problems. Uh, with a business way to see things. And, and I, we're doing the same thing with a sporting complex. We're going to do several sporting complex in the place. That's the same thing. Uh, I, I have to be sure that not only I do the good thing, because we're doing that to have after school programs, free after school programs from the kids. And, and everything, everything starts small, but it starts to give growing and growing and growing, when now it's going to be, we're going to have four sporting complexes, but also based on the fact that financially also is going to make sense, even if we are providing the after school free programs. That's, that's the bigger neighborhood. The biggest challenge that I had with the bigger neighborhood was we have these strip centers that, that all the small tenants, we can fix it. Uh, we can uh, have tenants really fast. But the bigger ones, it's impossible. It's, it's really hard. You cannot bring a 60,000 square feet tenant to a neighborhood that is not doing well. They're not coming. That's why in those ones, I had to decide to put my own businesses. That's why I'm creating businesses in every of those that are done in the way that makes sense as the neighborhood to be a great neighborhood. That's why. We, we take an, a, a building, we're going to do an art district where we're going to have artists uh, because artists are being running away from all the city because usually they come to a place, they make it cool. After that, the money comes and they have to go to the next one because they're going to afford rent. That's why we, we are doing that. We're doing a cinema. We're doing uh, two event centers. Um, uh, 
we're doing a lot of businesses in that first ring. The second ring also, I, I, I think the parcel of the mall, the mall into the, in the totality is 120 acres, uh, is, is really big. Now, a hundred of those acres is the parking, uh, 20 acres is the mall. And the 100 acres, I will create a, a new neighborhood also. That's the one that is going to take more time because 100 acres of development is a lot of development. Um, when, we, uh, when we have this contract with the first architectural firm that we hired to do to, to the master plan, uh, they come back a month after and they said, you had to give us the size of what you like to do. And I understand the question. I'm like, what do you mean? And these guys took 100 acres and they put it in downtown Indianapolis, and it was like five blocks with high rise. This is the maximum that you can do. The minimum, uh, you can keep it like that. You have to give us in between what you want because you can spend $10 billion or you can spend $1. That's why uh, that master plan. Uh, is, is where it will direct, we're gonna have uh, trails. Uh, in the long run, we like to utilize the Little Eagle Creek that is there, and uh, that, that I think that would be great, but that takes even more money, more time, more that we will need, matter or not, uh, a, we will need the help of the state, we need the, the help of the city for those, and that's why that, uh, that's, uh, at this point of the development is more a dream than, than a reality. But, the, the third circle actually is the actual mall. That is when, what we were talking before. Now, uh, with the mall itself, uh, the idea is to have this neighborhood, but at the same time to be a landmark of Indianapolis. Uh, the idea is we will be having uh, events that will happen every month, every two months, that are excuses to have fun. Basically, <laughs> uh, for example, I, I thought that uh, in winter time, if uh, it would be nice to be in the carnival in Brazil, that's why it was like, let's do a carnival. You know, then who likes to have some salsa in <laughs> in the middle of winter? That's why we're gonna have that. Uh, we ha we will have these kind of events that they are international, they are fun, that they are things that, uh, that one way or another one we we can. Uh, see it as just to to have fun uh, and to be sure that at the same time we can forget all the difference that we are tired to see every day. Uh, that's why one of the things that I I tell my team every time that they bring me an idea is uh, we have too many places to fight for and too many things to fight for. Our place is going to be just to share the human experience. You understand? If you want to talk about politics, do it from the door out. <laughs> if you want to talk about religion, good for you, do it, but from the door out. This is going to be the safe place. The idea is just to have an opportunity to be, to have fun. I don't want to uh, be a teacher of multiculturalism either. You understand? There are places for that. I want to just say, okay, this is colorful, this is fun, everybody can do it. That's it. If you want to, because you saw that event and you like and you want to know more about the history of the event, or if you want to go to that country, good for you. It's not my mission. You understand? Know, my mission is we like to have a place that is colorful, that is enjoyable, that, that you can be sure that it's a safe place to be nice with everybody. That's, that's the main picture of what we're doing there. And the, um, the other thing uh, that, that, that we try to accomplish is, is to be sure that all the uh, development uh, happen as fast as we can. Uh, and that's why at this point I have a lot of teams working at the same time because uh, I don't like to walk, I like to run. And that's why next year you're gonna see a lot of different things happen every, pretty much every couple months you're gonna see a press release from us because we, we are, we're going to be open, 
opening all these businesses, opening all these events. We're going to be, uh, the mall is going to be open next year. And basically, that's, that's the way that the whole uh, development of what we're doing is it come to realize. That's why, I don't know if, if you guys have some questions, and I will be open for any questions that you have about development. easy. <laughs> is this thing on? Yes, it is. Okay. So um, when I think of Nashville and I think of Austin, I think of music as kind of the, the mm -hmm. that's what they did. And it seems to me like Austin yeah. kind of copied Nashville. And yes. so did I hear you say you're going to use art and is it applied arts or? You, you touch a great uh, point there. Uh, the because the idea is to help also the state, because it's going to be in our best interest, to bring and recruit talent. Uh, when I was thinking about that, I was like, why, why, why they are so popular? They have pretty much an event that is three days that I can put together. That's not that hard. Uh, Nashville, uh, they, they supposed to be the owners of the alternative music. Nashville, the country of commercial music. But there is no in a small city that hosts the international music. But most, most, most uh, talent come from abroad, or like to have uh, international be exposure to that. That's why that's our idea to have something like that. But uh, obviously, there's alternative music in every big city, the same way that there is country music and, and commercial music in every big city. That's why a big city is not going to say, yeah, I'm the capital. But small cities like we have, yeah, we can be the capital. And that's our idea, to have, actually, I was last week, <laughs> matter of fact, I was talking to the, the one that is, the, this guy is the number one uh, artist in India. And I was talking about it. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, can you can you help me to put together some uh, a Indian thing? Because I can I can have the South America, and because he's based in LA, he knows pretty much all the places. But that's something that we're working on. And the idea is to find a time of the year where we can put this big festival together. That we can when we say international music." I'm not saying only international, I'm saying local music, because that's another thing that I want to be sure. When we say everybody, we say everybody. You understand, including, um, I would love to have country music also. You understand, I would love to have commercial music also. I would love to have American music in different places. We talked to the, to the Museum of Jazz in New Orleans, and they said, yeah, we'll do it. Actually, that's an mission. That's why we do it for free. We're going to bring all the artists, everything, because our mission pays for that. I'm like, sure. That's another thing that we're going to do. All these things that, that we're doing, for example, we were, we were having an all outside of the mall, we, we will put um, murals. And talking to the muralists, and I'm like, and I start to see that there is not a lot of money spent in muralists and the artists. I'm like, because they were talking about this big money that is not that a lot of money. I'm like, okay, where where is the international mural fest? I said, there is no one. All right, we have one now. <laughs> you understand? All these things are, are going to start to happen. We have a lot going on. What I'm going to promise you is all these things, we're going to put it together, and, and they're going to be implemented really fast. And what I'm saying really fast is from now to the next three, five years. Uh, all the construction work, it will, it will happen between uh, next year and the following. Uh, at least in the bigger circle that is the whole neighborhood, then the whole neighborhood is going to be done at least the first phase uh, next year. When I'm saying the first phase, we like to have trails that go from the Monon or the C CTX to Eagledale. We will have another Monon that I'm working with, several institutions to have the, mon the other Monon. We like to have some Monon trails that goes from there. We, we are working on this lineal part that I've been working with 
uh, to see if I can do it with the Indianapolis Speedways that go from Indianapolis Speedways to the mall. You understand? That's those sort of things that, are, that we're working on to be sure that those are implemented. But the neighborhood itself, the way that it's going to look, the, the full occupancy is going to be finished next year. The mall itself inside, with the exception of the, the anchors, are going to be finished next year. We're going to have and the other anchors are going to finish in 2024. For example, we were the construction work. Uh, we're, we're developing one apartment complex now, and we're developing a boutique hotel. Uh, but those ones are, as we finish everything that we're doing, that is a lot. We're going to move all our, our our team to start to work really fast to develop the parcel that is the second ring. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Uh, I really love the idea of you trying to incorporate uh, multiculturalism in like uh, the mall and like the area in the neighborhood. And of course, it's going to attract a lot of new people. But um, my question is like, how are you going to make sure that this also uh, benefits the local residents and the local communities? Is this also going to like create jobs um, for local communities? Like, um, and obviously, like this is going to attract new people, but also like. Um, we want it to see benefit the people of the West Side, like people who have been there their whole lives. Like, how are they going to grow along with um, the new project you're building? Okay, it's a great question, actually. Uh, your question has different layers. It's a complicated subject. But I will start from the beginning. Um, and everything that I do, because I'm a character and, and relationship person, I, I always uh, give the opportunity to the people to grow with the project. Uh, for example, we just finished, uh, the restaurants that we have in the neighborhood are great, but can be better. And I have some pushback from some, <laughs> some local institutions, you understand, know, some nonprofits. And they were like, no, they are great. I say, yes, they're great. But at the same time, there are certain best standards that they're not practicing. If we can do that, they can even be better and they can they can make more money and they can make the, the, the neighborhood more attractive. I won't be obligated to be better. You know, if they want to be better, it's fine. But I will give them the opportunity to be better. Now, something that I learned doing that in different places is that sometimes it's not as much of the opportunity uh, is for the people to put the effort to grab the opportunity. Uh, I thought that we we're going to have, because I spend uh, $50,000 of my own money to train uh, five restaurants at a time, and we provide the uh, our financials person, uh, we provide our marketing guy, we provide we pay for six months of free internet and, 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 and media. We pay for a, a person that has a lot of restaurants uh, to put this program together to be sure that they understand what they do. And, and we realize that they, they, didn't, they didn't know that much. Now, the people that sign up, yeah, great. They are, they are doing better, and they're going to be better. But I was surprised how many people say no. You know, then there are some people they don't want to grow with the neighborhood. That or they say, well, if I had to spend, if I had to give better service, I need to hire another server, and they don't want to hire another server because it's more complicated, and 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 and, and they're comfortable in the way that they are. Now, at the same time, with construction, uh, we suffer some. Okay. For me, as a company owner, the most important thing that I have is my reputation. You understand? Uh, you can, I can, I can have somebody in my company to lose money, and I'm fine with it. But another reputation. Now, in the past year and a half of this project, I have to go through several times to have my reputation to be touched because I give opportunity to people. I hire somebody in construction; they don't do what they should. I teaching what, what, they, what they do, but, after, but it's that work that they did is a reflection of, <laughs> of my company. Uh, but it still is worth it, because a lot of people have the opportunity to grow. Now, with the neighborhood itself, like I said, 
uh, with the tenants. Actually, I was telling some, some of the people that are present, uh, I'm spending a lot of money, I'm saying hundreds of, of thousands of dollars, just to give the opportunity to the tenants that we have there. Uh, it would be easy for me to close them all, tell everybody, please go, and start to work in my development and start to ha bring the, the tenants that I want. Now, what I did is I talked to them, I said, everybody's going to have a chance here to be part of a new project. We also were providing business coaching, we're providing marketing coaching, we're providing uh, interior design coaching and pay some of that. And actually last week, uh, we decided to fix the Sears building to relocate most of the business there until we finish construction. Uh, that costs us a lot of money that I, I won't get money back. And they're not paying rent. This is free rent for them because I want to be sure that they have the opportunity to get there. Now, I know because we're starting to having some problems now. There are certain tenants that if they don't change certain things to be up to the task, it will be hard for them to perform in this level that we will provide. I think that I, I, I put a lot of money to give them the opportunity to get there. Now, if they don't get there for the lack of effort or for other things, there is, I cannot do more. You understand? And sometimes people uh, can complain when any a developer takes the easy route to say, okay, <laughs> everybody out. I'm not doing it like that. You understand? The same thing with the neighborhood. Uh, we will try to be sure that we help the neighborhood to, to be in the neighborhood. Now, if, if somebody, if the neighborhood starts to grow and there are certain people that, that won't be able to be in the neighborhood, hopefully they can make enough money selling their house to, 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 to be compensated for that. But we are trying to do everything that we can and everything that we touch to be sure that the people had a way to to be in the be part of the new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, I can. That's a great question. Now, uh, the, the perfect is the enemy of the good. You understand? That's why uh, we, we're not going to succeed on that 100%. It's impossible. You understand? It's going to be people that, for some reason or another one, uh, they're not going to be part of it. And, and that's an unfortunate Unfortunately, way of, of the of the growing. I, you have two options. You don't have it. You don't have three options. You have or you fix the neighborhood and you give the opportunity to people to be there or not. Now, if when you do that, that I think is the best way to do it, you're not great enough to include a hundred percent of the people. Uh, the, that's not a third option. You understand? Uh, I, nothing that I do is perfect. Basically, you understand, I try to do the best that I can in everything that I do, and there are employees that are not going to be here. You understand, it's part of life. You cannot be 
so attached to be perfect that at the end you don't do anything. <laughs> because that's the alternative. It's, it's not a choice of, we don't have three choices. We don't have, uh, we don't do anything, we do the best that we can, or, or we do this magic thing that it will be taken care of 100% of the things. That's fantasy, you understand? That doesn't happen. Now, at the same time, I agree with you that most people are in the first camp, but they don't do anything. <laughs> no, they don't care. They're just looking for the money, and that's it. You know, then nobody's going to spend the money that I'm spending. I'm spending in, in this building that, that I'm putting for the tenants that are not paying to be sure that they're part of what is coming. Only to fix a building, I'm paying almost a million dollars. If I do it for the money, <laughs> I keep that money. You understand? Now, at the same time, thanks that the way that I am, always what I did the right thing, the things comes back to me in a thousand ways. That's, I think, the main reason why I always do better than anybody else, because I care. You understand? Now, if because I care, somebody can criticize me because I don't care more, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> then I, I cannot do more than I do. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I can tell you that I do more than anybody. That's, that's my compromise. And my compromise, that's the reason why if you go to this neighborhood, everybody knows what we're doing. You understand? You're not going to see that many neighbors associations that are against me. You understand? You're not going to see, uh, go and talk to the, the mall, uh, the, the guys that are tenants in the mall. They're going to tell you. Go to any of our properties and, and talk to the tenants. Because this is the way that I see when I'm a landlord. I'm a, I'm, I'm a different kind of landlord also. When I'm a landlord, I try to be sure that my tenant does the best that he can and I will help him in any way and form to be successful. Because if he's successful, he's gonna pay more rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna do better. That's why we both can benefit from this. Now. If I do that, but this thing and don't do what it takes in order to get there, or, or, or there is a different reason, a different aspect why uh, he cannot grow with me, I, I think that I did the most that I could in order to give him a path forward. You understand? And again, uh, what I learned is there is a lot of people that they don't want to grow. I, I was shocked because I'm, I'm competitive, I'm, I'm, I'm working 24-7 all my life. And when I see somebody is, that you give them the chance and they're like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks, I'm okay with the way that it is, it's surprising to me. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to still do what it takes in order to give them the opportunity. But that, that would be the way to, to, to answer your question. Uh, we spend a lot of money doing things to give an opportunity to the people, but unfortunately, some people are going to take it. There are going to be people on the way. That's the unfortunate weight of life. Um, it's always dangerous to give me the mic. Um, so you talked about window of the world, and I loved the comment about, uh, you know, you were originally talking about these different streets and, you know, African street and an Asian street and a Latin American street, and then your friends had said, that sounds like Epcot or Vegas, because I won't lie, I, w I was thinking it. Um, <laughs> and and, and you said, that's not where I want to go. I want to do something that's more authentic. Um, am I understanding correctly that what we're looking at here is a model of highlighting the, what I think you said, 133, 138 um, uh, nationalities represented in the nor near Northwest area, especially that 38th Street corridor, highlighting who we have here to start with. And then there's a piece of this that is events, international music events and sporting events. And I heard a cinema center, so International Film Festival would be amazing. Yes. I have friends in Hollywood, we should do things. Um, but um, that's in Nigeria, in case anyone didn't pick up on that. That wasn't a slip of the tongue. Um, and but is the, the piece I missed, you said you had heard someone at a, at a Chamber of Converse, uh, Commerce meeting talking about how difficult it is to get international businesses in Indiana. Is one of the models here to bring in international businesses? Okay. Um, 
She wasn't talking about international, she was talking about business in general. What she said is, uh, it's hard to bring in here. When they come, they like it because they, they, they see that it's not the pre-perception that they have about Indiana. Uh, and, and that's the main thing that they have is if they can change that perception. That's, that's what I took it. If, if I can have this festival and we can have this window uh, to the world and, and we can advertise that around, not only around the city, uh, around the, the state, the country, and the world. Now, for example, I grew up in Argentina and I thought that Indianapolis was this big metropolis when we grew up because uh, Formula One was here. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's, 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 you don't know anything about the city. The only thing that you know is where you advertise around the world. Uh, races as cute as they are, that, that's the target of, of the, those races are not international. And, and even national, I can say that uh, doesn't fit the demographic of uh, Italian right now. And that's why what I was saying is basically that, is if we can have this neighborhood that can be better than any other neighborhood, because the reality when you go to these places, they have great stores, but they're located in different places. They don't have a single neighborhood that is an explosion of that, that on top of that is also different than them, that also has an international twist on it. Uh, when I was uh, working as, as a real estate agent, uh, and, and I sold more than, than a thousand properties, I worked uh, at the beginning as a relocation, uh, a real estate agent of Lilies. And most of the people who were coming here, they were like, I want to be in Carmel. That's it. They, they didn't want to be in another place. And most of the people, they were from other countries. And, and I was, now, if, you, if you're coming back to India, if you're an Indian and, and, and you have to choose between Carmel and a place that you have seven good Indian restaurants, four Indian stores, you're half an hour closer from the airport that they travel all the time. You're half an hour closer for every sport event that is in downtown. And on top of that, most of the event in the city happen in your neighborhood. There is no question. You understand? That's, that's, there is no even close. And, and as long as we can complete that project, we, we will do fine. Uh, now, uh, with the confusion between what we're doing outside of the mall and what we're doing inside of the mall, the, the mall is going to be a neighborhood. And we're going to do events in the halls. That's why that's, we're going to take the mall as an event center, basically. And all the events that we're going to do, international events, are going to be there. On top of that, we have an American venue that we have concerts that is going to be located in the mall, but it's going to be one on the anchors. And we have another one that is across the street from the mall that is uh, for Mexican music uh, and, and, and Latin music also. That is going to be twice of the one that is now. It's going to be a lot nicer because I made this arrangement with the biggest producer of the Mexican music in, in the country. That's why it seems confusing because there is a lot going on. <laughs> but, but that's, I don't know if you answered the question. No, it does. Thank you so much. All right, let's give a big thing, um, uh, round of applause. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. De La Cruz is going to stay for a couple minutes afterwards.